Hi, I'm Rich Gallicini, and welcome back to Cunningham Piano Company. Hey, Rich. Hugh, welcome. Good to see you. I'm glad you joined me this morning. I told you I would have a surprise. Oh, cool. Is this for me? Well, it is, actually. Oh, cool. Well, you, you really should bring it right down and put it into your car right oh, now. Oh, okay, okay. All right, go ahead. Like, oh, man. What? Good grief. <laughs> arr, arr. i got to work on my weight training program. What is this? Well, this is a cast iron frame from a grand okay. piano. Okay, so a cast iron frame. When you open up a grand piano, mm -hmm. this is what you would see underneath the strings, the piece of metal. The pianist would play here. The keys would be here, okay. The back of the piano would be over there. Tuning pins here, strings in between. Gotcha, okay. So, oh, I'm heavy, man. I feel like Thor's hammer, I am unworthy. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the thing. Uh, I'm, I put you up to that, obviously. Sure. This weighs a lot more, <laughs> let's see. Well, how much do you weigh? Uh, I'm not going to reveal that. Huh? I'm on a diet here. So I'm, I'm guessing this is what, three, 400 pounds, something About like that? About 450 pounds. 450 pounds. Okay. I think it's easy to say this is more than three hues. <laughs> <laughs> At least. <laughs> anyway, so um, this is the main tensile strength for the modern piano. OK. Now, I have a question for you. Sure. In 1820, did they have a cast iron frame similar to this in the piano? I'm going to guess no. Am I right? You're right. Okay. You're right. Oh, they were made of all of wood. And those older, I mean, when Beethoven had a piano, the early pianofortes, they were all made primarily, the frame was all made of wood. That's right. Okay. So there was no frame of any sort. And why did we start using cast iron frames? Well, from my understanding, as composers started writing more powerful pieces, requiring more strings, more keys, a, a larger range of notes. Yes. The, the, and a uh, larger the, range of dynamics. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, the problem was that manu manufacturers started to see is that these wooden frames started to buckle. Mm -hmm. And it was just so much pressure being added on by all the strings being wound and tuned and tightened. And so you'd have pianos buckling, but also not holding their pitch. Yes. So a whole host of problems. Just out, out of curiosity, on a, on a modern piano, how much pressure is being applied with the strings being wound around and tightened and tuned inside sure. of a piano? So first, let's talk about the definition of the modern piano. Okay. The modern piano, to me, is around the 1870s. Okay. That doesn't mean that there haven't been more things changed, but the main piano, if we play uh, an 1880 instrument by some of the finer makers like, well, let's say this is a Steinway frame, so we'll say Steinway. Um, it's going to be very much like it is today. Mm, interesting. In technology, in the way it's built. Okay. So this cast iron frame is from an early 20th century Steinway A. Mm -hmm. This particular piano had between 18 and 20 tons of tension on it. Wow. That's a lot. Wow. We're talking about high tensile steel, treble mm -hmm. strings, stretched to a particular mass and a particular tension. And the bass strings look different than treble strings, don't they? They, they do. They're you know, steel strings wound with copper. That's right. And why are they wound with copper? Well, remember we said we need the right tension and the right mass? Uh-huh. In order to get the right mass for the lower notes, it needs to be a bigger, thicker string. We'll talk more about that in future absolutely. videos. Absolutely. Yes. I think it's going to be a great video to talk about the physics of the sound of the strings themselves. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. So anyway, let's, let's get into the cast iron frame itself. Well, mm -hmm. I, I guess, what is it made of? Cast iron. Well, what exactly is cast iron? Sure. Cast iron uh, is, well, in the name implies, it's a metal that takes very well to casting. Okay, casting, so, in other words, shaping, molding, so that you have these beautiful f flowing lines and curved shapes that really uh, help with the, the design of the piano. That's right. Now, the very first iron frames were made up of many different pieces mm -hmm. that sometimes were bolted together. The very first iron frame was actually just a few iron struts to add to the stability of the piano. Interesting. And then they became bolted together frames mm -hmm. um, and some plates. And today, the modern piano has an entire frame that's one piece. One solid piece. Now, this is all cast as one piece. Now, yes. why iron as opposed to maybe some other metal? Why not steel? Why not steel? Okay. Steel certainly is strong enough, isn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah, sure. Yeah. I would think. It's yeah. actually stronger than iron. OK. But uh, steel has resonant frequencies that would not agree with a piano. Uh, One of the nice things about cast iron is it gives us lots of power and it never gets into our way tonally. There's a resonant frequency, but there isn't a pitch. Ah, uh, interesting. Right? Okay, so it doesn't, it's not gonna vibrate sympathetically with the strings and add extra buzzes or noises or rings, right? If that happens, yeah. then the frame most likely has a flaw in uh, it. Ah, interesting. And that does occasionally happen. Okay. We've seen them. Mm -hmm. um, now, how to design a plate. 
I, I, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I, mean, I would imagine designing a plate, you'd get a piece of paper, start drawing things, and or maybe even make wooden models or clay models like they do with cars. I, tell me, how do they make uh, frames? Well, you're actually not very far there away. Yeah. <laughs> so let's talk about today. Okay. Today, there's CAD, computer-aided design. Okay. And actually, in the past, when a manufacturer wanted to bring out a model of piano, they might have to take four, five, or six, or more prototypes to experiment and see if what they think is going to be exactly what they want. Mm -hmm. And after those prototypes are done, they're usually destroyed. There are a few uh, pianos out there. I know of one Baldwin that was a prototype that isn't any particular model that survived, wasn't destroyed. So that does occasionally happen. Wow. But with CAD, we can look at how a scale design will work before we even make the piano mm -hmm. in a really cool, uh, it, Un, un, um, unprecedented way. For sure, sure. Yeah. And it sure saves a lot of money instead of having to build these prototypes over and over again. Having to design issues resolved in the computer before making them physically. Oh yeah, so we actually had some direct experience with that. We're showing you right now a photo of the CAD design of the first matchless Cunningham plate before it was made. This is our piano, right? That's right, very, that's very right. Cool. And this next photo, this is my business partner Tim Oliver with Frank Emerson at the factory with a wooden model of the final plate. Let's talk a little bit about how these plates are actually made. Now, mm -hmm. cast, again, it kind of implies there is a process. What is the casting process? How does this actually Sure, work? so the oldest casting process, and still hasn't really changed much in thousands of years, literally, is sand casting. So that wooden plate, that wooden model, is put into sand, made an impression into the sand, pulled out, and that sand then becomes the frame for making the frame. Oh, the mold, so to speak. Yeah, right? the mold, thank the you. The mold so. for making the frame. Yes. And so they would just melt some iron, mm -hmm. pour it into the sand. That's right. The frame. Is that how that works? That's exactly how it works. Oh, and leave it there for about three weeks. It sets very slowly. Oh, okay. So we want it to set slowly because if iron is dry on the outside and still molten on the inside, uh -huh. then you have stresses within the plate. That's when you can get flaws in the plate. Interesting. So it has to be left in one place for that to happen. Now, there are newer technologies. And there are many companies that make hundreds of thousands of pianos, well, 100,000 pianos, uh, that use a vacuum molded process where they have a plastic uh, mold, shoot molten iron in it, flash freeze it, and it's done. Oh, wow. OK. Um, a, some of those companies, like Yamaha, is now going back to sand casting in, in a lot of their models. What are the benefits of the, the older, traditional ways of, the old fashioned, slower way of creating these molds? What's, yes. What is the benefit? Well, I don't understand the chemistry of it. Okay. But, this sets in a different way when you do it very slowly than if it's flash frozen. Literally, the molecule is set up differently. Hmm. Um, so there is less resonance here. It's, it's more of a useful frame. And that's what we want. We don't want this frame resonating together with the strings. That's, is that that's the exactly right. Okay. By the way, I almost forgot. Yeah. Over my shoulder, yeah. we have an upright frame as well. So ah, uprights have them as well. Okay. This is from a Cunningham upright from the 1930s that we're in the middle of rebuilding for a client. How cool. So, so we see these holes in the bottom. That's right. represent the tuning pin that I'm assuming. The keys would kind of be out here. That's right. right. Is that right? Okay. And here's the hitch pin, which you can see here. That's where the end of the string hitches. Uh, and this is the original finish that was on the frame. Wow. Great. Now, what, what is the finish made out of? Well, I, frankly, many things. Okay. It's a metallic uh, powder, usually, that's in a suspension. Mm -hmm. So I don't know exactly what the formula we used then. Okay. Believe it or not, I wasn't around in the 1930s. You weren't? I wasn't, no. <laughs> But uh, today, when we refinish a frame, mm -hmm. frankly, most of the time, it looks better than it did when it was a new piano. Wow. So we strip this down to the bare metal. Mm -hmm. We use a black etching primer that adheres to the metal. We use a second primer that readies for the finish. Then we use that metallic suspension and then finally clear coat over that. Very, very and we have to be very, very careful. See, these hitch pins are bare. You can mm -hmm. see the, the, uh, the metal. Mm -hmm. We don't want to put material on the hitch pin because a string and the hitch pin and material between them can vibrate, uh -huh. flake off, cause tonal issues down the road that we simply don't want to deal with. And that's why when you see new manufacturers, you don't see finish on I those see, I hitch see. pins. Okay, very cool. That's something that uh, you know, anyone can look at in a rebuilt piano to see maybe what care was put into the entire process. And if, or if there are any hitch pins that are covered with paint or, or finish. Right? Yeah, okay. it just shows detail work. That's all. Very, very cool. Wow. Well, thank you so much. Sure. This is, uh, is, is That's probably really as heavy as this one as well. Yeah. Can I take that one home? <laughs> if you can pick if it I up. Can, if I can pick it up. It's like, yours. Like Thor's hammer. <laughs> Very, very cool. Well, Rich, thank you so much for this in-depth look into 
cast iron frames. Well, I want to thank you for taking the time to join me. This Absolutely. was really cool to do together. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it informative. If you enjoyed this, we'd love to get your comments, feedback, and even questions so that we can answer your questions in future, future videos. Sure. Be sure to leave them in the comments below. And as always, we have a weekly newsletter. So if you want to stay informed as to when our new videos and articles come out, be sure to sign up for our weekly newsletter subscription on our website at www.cunninghampiano.com. You are so good at this stuff. I, I'm getting good at this. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for joining us today. I'm Rich Gallicini. And I'm Hugh Sung for Cunningham Piano, and we'll see you next time.